The Armenia Art Fair is an event that showcases Armenian, Caucasian, and Asian artists and contemporary art. It aims to also establish a creative industry in Armenia. I'm joined today by Dr. Ian Robertson, the Head of Art Business Studies at Sotheby's Institute of Art in London, and also the curator of the fair's 2022 Education and Culture Programme. Dr. Robertson is also the author of a book, which you should all check out, called A Pathway for Modern and Contemporary Armenian Art. So Dr. Robertson, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. So a pathway through modern and contemporary mm -hmm. Armenian art. Uh, can you tell us why you decided to embark on this project, on this journey? And what was it exactly about Armenian contemporary art that tickled your fancy? Well, I must be honest that when I first embarked on this project, I knew very little. But um, there is an institute in London called the Armenian Institute, and it does have a, a relatively large body of work where you can do the research. Um, and why was I interested? Well, because of the art fair itself. And I grew, well, and I first came here in 2019. I became enthused by a lot of the local museums you had here, Sarion, for example, the Sarion Museum, Panajanov Museum. And I suddenly realized that there was a great trove of culture here, which, including your manuscripts museum, uh, which, uh, you know, had really, I knew very little about. So I, I think the idea of the book was to not only talk about the big names, Arshul Gorki, Paul Grigozian, um, Minas Abestian, um, and Sarian, but also to look at some of the, the lesser names, which, you know, in the modern period are pretty much overlooked by the market. And I think that's the great thing, and indeed by the art world. I'm looking here at Grief by Hagop Hakopian. Fantastic work, which is uh, you know, the, you know, almost the equivalent of, of a Picasso blue period. And yet people would not have known about it unless it's presented to them in English. Otherwise, it's speaking to an Armenian audience, but we really want to talk to a wider audience, to you know, to beyond the diaspora even, and 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 to engage with um, an international public. Do you think there's an international market for Armenian art? I mean, you also go into depth about how Armenian art is is unique and differentiable from the art coming from other countries. Mm. Um, what made you notice this? And do you think there is a market? For Armenian art? That's a really good question. I mean, the art fair did sell. Um, there obviously is a market. Whether the market is, is still locally based or whether it's international is another question. I think it is still locally based. And one of the reasons why we did this book and why we hope to do more publications in the future is to get more international people to come to, to see Armenian art in Armenia. Because you have the cultural history here mm -hmm. to, to attract people. You have even the museums. But, you know, people are not really aware of what contemporary and modern Armenian art is. And so I hope that that is one of the upsides of this book, that it, that it begins to educate people who are not you know, informed about Armenian modern contemporary art. I mean, Armenian art has very distinct stages, time periods as well. Yes. There's classical, yeah. there's medieval, there's Soviet, there's First Republic, there's post-independence. Yeah. Is the modern scene still distinct? Is it still... Um, uh, distinctly Armenian or is it very much globalized like a lot of um, contemporary art is? So much of it is from the diaspora. So you're looking at an Armenian artist from Egypt or an Armenian artist from the Lebanon um, or from more likely Tbilisi actually. Was it, was a, there was an enormous school. So it, it's hard to say that there is an archetypal Armenian art because it comes from such an enormously wide range of places. Very few Armenians worked in Armenia per se. Um, artists anyway. So um, I would say this is the challenge, is to try to, to create some sort of coherent aesthetic. Um, or, or, or if not that, then to elevate the artists who, de who deserve to be elevated mm -hmm. and who have who gone, you know, have, have missed the cut, so to speak, in, in global terms. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, in terms of the art fair, I've been speaking to local artists and many say that an issue that remains for Armenia is that even though there is a very vibrant art scene, it, it, there is a lack of a creative industry, which is what the art fair also aims to, yeah. to establish in the country. Uh, what do you think they're getting at? What do you think they mean when they say these things? What needs to be done? And also, yeah. how does the art fair help in that respect? Well, I think the art fair brings a certain art-based pub public to Armenia. I mean, there must be some people who visit, not just for monuments, but also for the contemporary art. There are galleries here. There's the Dalam Gallery. There's Army Gallery. You know, there are galleries here. There's a bit of an institution, bit, bit of an infrastructure. Um, there's the, uh, the, the experimental space um, for the art 
experimental space quite near my hotel, actually. Um, so there are museums and institutions, but um, I think to develop cultural industries, it needs to have um, something more than the barrels building. It needs something much more um, contemporary in, in architectural terms and also in, in what it shows. So being ambitious, uh, a new museum for contemporary art would be ideal. And even being more ambitious, um, a Biennale. And then you really would begin to attract uh, you know, an educated art world public. Do you think there are any countries around the world that have successfully managed to market their contemporary art to an outside market? Oh yes, Korea. Korea is the blueprint for everyone. I mean, they started just before the World Cup, really. Well, maybe slightly earlier, after the, after the Olympic Games in 1988. But they really promoted things in the art field after the World Cup in 2002. Created museums, they created Media City, they pioneered electronic art. Um, they manufactured movements um, that had gone under the radar. Dunset Qua was one of them, the brush painting movement. And then their big dealers grew in size and importance and began to export that art overseas to, to create international movements. And for a country, um, you know, it's not, not a huge country, they, their cultural punch is, is phenomenal, really. And they've done an incredible job. And actually Freeze has just moved to, to Seoul, so Freeze Art Fair. And has really made it into an international venue. So it is possible with the will and the money and the, and the government support. And do you think Armenian artists have that potential as well? What do you think of the local art scene? I mean, I've seen enough. Um, I think it needs to um, engage much more with the outside world. Um, or else it needs to go deep into its own culture and to look at the craft-based elements of a lot of the work in, in Armenia, which is carpet making and etc. And these things which are overlooked, I think. Um, and the religious aspect to a lot of Armenian art needs to be explored perhaps a bit more. Um, but so you've got two choices. You can either go to the international route and create products, or you can go mine your own past and look for traditions and then develop them in a modern and contemporary way, which is what I really like and what the Koreans have done. And I mean, the contemporary and modern art scene in Armenia, its Caucasian neighbors, Georgia, Azerbaijan and other countries, is very much influenced by the Soviet Union as well yeah. and the art scene in the Soviet Union. I mean, um, film, architecture, illustration, all these things were quite valued in a sense in the yes. Soviet system. And there is this thing about the perception of artists. Mm. So I'm wondering what you think about that, that influence, that mm. you know, older style of modern and contemporary art. Did you see that when you were viewing Armenian I, artists? I did see it. And uh, it's interesting you, sh you should mention that because exactly that's the, the challenge that China had when it, when it migrated from one transition from one society to another. Um, and the same happened obviously in Armenia when the Soviet Union collapsed you were left with these incredible structures, um, some of them quite beautiful actually in their own way, and a school of painting which was veering towards socialist realism. So yeah, I, but I, I think the best of Armenian art actually has steered away from socialist realism and, and, and has adopted a more impressionistic of, um, uh, impressionistic um, style. Um, and and it, in, in reje it actually rejected most of the Soviet realist art. So I think I would say that in, in its rejection of the system, in some respects, you find you find the great art. Yes, and I mean, you've come to Armenia to attend the art fair, but you've come to Armenia before, uh, yeah. before the art fair, so I'm wondering, what was it like this year? What did you think of the art fair? Will you come yeah. back in the future for another art fair? Oh, definitely, tomorrow, next year, I hope I'm, back, I'm invited back again, because it was, um, there are lots of projects at Spaces this time, which I thought were very interesting, and every art fair should now focus on project space as much as selling, because it's more than just the selling, it's also you know, the educational aspect of it all. There's a very interesting dealer from Hong Kong called Han Art, um, and, they, and they brought over a very interesting video about the Confucius rites of archery. You know, these, these are things which you, know, you only know about if you see it in, in, in for the first time, and, and, and that's, it's, it's educational. So I thought the fair, again, fulfilled its dual function of being commercial, but also with substantial, you know, um, uh, experimental spaces. I mean, uh, a lot of Armenia's art scene, interestingly, is also dispersed around the country yeah. in other cities like Vanadzor and Gyumri, for example. Mm. Do you think the establishment of a creative industry around Armenian artwork, however, uh, 
poses any risks for the community, any challenges? What should we be ready for if that phenomenon does occur in the Armenian art scene? It's hard to imagine a country of this size and this scale that having more than one centre, to be frank. I mean, I think you're asking an enormous amount to have different centres in different cities. I don't think it, the population um, allows for that. Mm -hmm. um, um, again, I look at other models around the world. Taiwan's an example. I mean, Taipei is essentially the only market. There are smaller subsidiary markets, but they are mainly for artists to work. Mm -hmm. That may be a possibility. But I think you need to center all your attention on Yerevan because this is where um, the, the critical mass, one million people, mm -hmm. um, and an infrastructure, uh, which is not to say artists can't live in different parts of Armenia, but whether they actually buy and sell art in different cities, I think that's, a, that's probably a bit of a stretch. Mm -hmm. And in terms of creative industry, what sort of infrastructure is needed for that sort of um, industry? Does Armenia have that sort of infrastructure? Well, there you've got me at a bit of a loss. I'm not quite sure what government policy <laughs> is on arts in, in Armenia. I know you have a pavilion in Venice, yes. um, which is still funded privately, I understand. Is it or is it now funded by the, by the Armenian government? I think it's by the government now. Isn't I'm it? unsure. I'm unsure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have that. You have that outlet in, in Venice. Um, but um, in art centres, um, need to meet, need to proliferate, um, and again, non-profit spaces which are experimental need to proliferate, and then you get a dealer back. You, you get a dealer structure on top of that. Once you have the creativity and the and the right to experiment, you then start to get the the, the, the dealers um, profiting from that. In terms of the book, a pathway through modern and contemporary Armenian art. Uh, how can people get their hands on it? Well, it's a limited production at the moment. We hope to go into, into more editions, of course. Um, you can buy it, I think, from uh, any good bookstore in Armenia, I was, I was going to say, I don't know. Well, you can certainly buy it from the fair um, or online. I think that's probably the best way. And this, this is the book if you want to, if you're interested. And it takes you through all the way through some of the politics of Armenia, mm -hmm. through two chapters on contemporary art, because that was, uh, I think that was, that was re required. Mm -hmm. And then you know, some of the classic moderns as well. So there's, a bit, there's, there's something in here for everyone. And Nazareth Karahan contributed the final chapter to the book. Now, he was very helpful. Okay, so Dr. Robertson, thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on yeah. CivilNet.